Hi, everybody, and welcome to the public meeting about the Hudson River Gateway. We have uh, people joining in, and we'll be getting going in just a few minutes. Hi, everyone, and welcome. We'll be getting started in just a few minutes as uh, just giving people a few more minutes to sign on. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Nancy Reka. I'm with Highland Planning, and I'll be the moderator for this meeting tonight. You have arrived at the public meeting for the uh, gateways to the Hudson River waterfront. At Pulumi right now, we have, um, I don't know, let's see, 11, 12 people, a few people still coming in. Do you want to get started um, with just some of the preliminary stuff or wait another minute? I think we can get started. So, okay. yeah, great. great. All, right. All right. Well, welcome to the first public meeting for this project. I'm Polumi Sen. I'm the senior project manager for the city's planning department. I want to thank you all for taking the time to join us this evening and for sharing your experiences about the project area that will help shape the immediate improvements and the long-term design goals for the space. I'm now going to hand over to a brilliant team of consultants on this call today to get started. Thanks so much. Once again, my name is Nancy Reka and I'm with Highland Planning and I will be the moderator for tonight's meeting. Just to orient you a little bit to this Zoom platform, although I'm sure most of you have seen Zoom in the past couple of years, um, tonight we're having a webinar, which means that you can see the panelists, but you cannot see each other and we cannot see you. We can see your names on our attendee list. And tonight um, you're, you've been muted and your video, as I said, is off. So uh, you can use the chat or we'll be having some discussion tonight and you can use the chat to leave your comments. Um, you can also, by clicking on the participant list, raise your hand, or you may have a raise hand button right in your toolbar. Also, um, your share screen has been disabled. Um, we will be doing a couple of polls tonight to get to know you and get some of your thoughts. If you accidentally close the poll uh, while it's going on, you can just click on the poll button in your uh, toolbar. Also, you can use the Q&A feature, but we encourage you to use the chat and to make sure that you put that chat in uh, to everyone. 
go to the next slide, um, you can see this is just an example of how you can change the layout of your screen so that you can decide how you would like to see the speakers versus the slides. So in the upper right corner, there's a little thing that says view, or you might see little uh, shapes like this. That'll allow you to change the way you view the screen. So go, moving on to tonight's agenda. Uh, tonight, I am joined, uh, as she said, by Poli Mi Sen and, um, from the city of Omni. And we also have our team here from our consultants, Stantec. And so they will be introducing you to the project and the goals of the project. We will be looking at the two sites that are under discussion tonight. Uh, we're calling them the Northern and the Southern Gateways. So you'll be getting more details about where those are, what those look like now. And then we're gonna share with you some inspiration and examples of uh, things that have been done in other places that might apply here and get your feedback on those. We're gonna have a little bit of a discussion as we go. So welcome again, and uh, thank you all for attending. Also just wanna note that we are recording this meeting and we will be posting it on the city's website following the meeting. So before we get into the goals and schedule, let's do a little bit of an icebreaker. So I'm interested in knowing where the folks uh, on the webinar are from. Do you live in Albany? Do you work in Albany? Visit from time to time, or maybe <laughs> you're in California and you've never been to Albany. Um, so please uh, go ahead and uh, select whichever ones apply to you. And we're almost there. Uh, and I don't see that we have anyone on the phone. So, okay, so I'm gonna end this poll and share the results with you. So you should be able to see that 79% uh, of you live in Albany and 57% of you work in Albany. And all of you have, have been to Albany. So that's, that's terrific. So thank you, we're, we're glad you're here. And uh, we will go ahead now and um, I'm gonna ask Chris Carter from Stantec to walk us through some of the project goals and schedule. All right, thanks, Nancy. Uh, my name is Chris Carter. I'm an engineer with Stantec. Um, we're a consulting uh, engineering company with an office in Albany. Um, so we are the design consultant for this project. Uh, we're working, as Nancy mentioned, we're working with the city of Albany, the planning department, as well as Highland Planning. Uh, Nancy's with Highland Planning, and they're helping us with the public engagement. Um, and then, of course, Stantec, we're, we're looking at the design aspects. So with the Hudson River Gateways project, the primary goal is to promote and enhance connections uh, between the downtown Albany uh, warehouse district and of course the riverfront. Um, this project uh, is, is funded uh, with a grant from the New York State Department of State. Um, and that gives us construction budget for this, uh, this portion of the project of um, 250 to $300,000. So right now, this is a fairly small scale uh, project, and it's a it's we consider it an initial investment in these gateways. Um, and the purpose of of these this public outreach here is to try to determine what your uh, what your view is of these gateways, how they feel for you, what maybe some some potential improvements are, what are some issues, um, and things that could be improved to one, identify things that can be uh, built now with that initial $300,000 in funding, and then also have a list of things uh, that can be done moving forward as more funding sources are uh, identified. Um, I do want to note there is a feasibility study out right now for the uh, reimagining of the IE-787 uh, corridor. Um, as, uh, as much as that is directly next to this project. Um, it is not in the scope of this. Obviously, this is a $300,000 uh, project. This is a short-term project. Um, that's a much larger discussion, much longer term uh, thing. So what we wanna do here is improve these gateways and I'll show you where the gateways are on the next slide, but we wanna make the improvements now. These are, these are 
little things we can do to make these uh, uh, better uh, for users and for the public and for everybody uh, right now. Um, you know, the 787 reimagination will be, you know, that's longer, you know, eight, 10 years. The feasibility study runs through 2026. So if you have any questions specifically or comments related to that, um, I'm sure there will be plenty of public outreach opportunities during that three year study. Um, and, and it's probably better forums than, than this meeting. So I just want to kind of set the stage there. Um, and then just in terms of project schedule, so right now we've we've gone through the initial scoping, done some site visits, um, and started gathering some initial ideas ahead of this meeting. Um, and then we right now are here on May the fourth for uh, public meeting number one. Uh, once we get done with this meeting, we'll go back to the drawing board, digest the comments you had, come up with some initial design concepts, and uh, present them again during a second public meeting early in the early summer of this year. Um, we'll progress through some final design for at least that uh, that initial construction um, over the summer, um, put it out to bid late summer, early fall, um, and then uh, construction at the two gateways um, would start as early as uh, fall of this year and run into spring of uh, next year. Uh, we're going to talk about two different gateway sites. The southern gateway um, would probably progress first. So you may see construction there as early as this fall. Um, and then the Northern Gateway would be would be later, um, pushing into next spring. So that's just kind of a general uh, project goals and schedule. Uh, now I kind of want to show you where these sites are. So you are all from Albany. You all, uh, you, everyone here <laughs> lives and works in Albany, which is great. Um, and I'm sure you're familiar with this stretch. Um, so we have two gateways. We're calling them the Northern Gateway and the Southern Gateway. So the Northern Gateway is up as you come off of 787 down Water Street. Um, there's a, a traffic light at, at the intersection of Colony Street um, with the Albany's beautiful central warehouse right there on the corner. Um, so this is our Northern Gateway. Um, and then the Southern Gateway is down further south on uh, Broadway. And um, this is where Broadway uh, kind of makes the loop and you can you can duck under 787 and uh, CP Rail and get over to the river and onto Quay Street. And uh, you'll know this area because it's got that Hudson Riverfront sign posted on the uh, on the bridge. Um, so this is further south on Broadway. And, and then we kind of show some other. Uh, other um, uh, landmarks uh, and places in the city just to kind of get your your bearings. Um, Now, kind of a little bit more detail about the two uh, the two gateways here. So we'll start at the northern gateway. Um, <clears throat> so as you're heading south off of 787, or I'm yeah off of 787, uh, you duck down the ramp, and then 787 ends up on the viaduct up to your left. Um, and there's a a parking lot. Uh, New York State OGS runs that parking lot. Um, it's it's used as the uh, rain site for uh, Alive at Five. Um, there's uh, there's a couple of uh, curb cuts to access that parking lot on uh, on uh, Water Street as you're coming down the ramp. Um, but you don't necessarily know they're there if you're not looking for them. So if, if you wanted to try to use this parking lot to access the river um, and you weren't really sure that that's where you wanted to go, you may miss your opportunity to pull in there. So that's that's a kind of a consideration there. Um, photo two here, um, that's just a view under the bridge. So that's where you can actually see the river. You've actually got a nice view of the Livingston Avenue bridge, which is another project, which is, uh, which is going to be ongoing, um, again, outside of our scope, but this is a nice, uh, opportunity here. We've got the shared use path running, uh, running down to the river there, um, connecting in with the, uh, uh, the bike trail and again, more parking lots. Um, Photo three is kind of showing you the intersection. So as you're coming down the ramp heading south on Water Street, um, you do get a really nice view. Um, this would be your first view of the city skyline. And it is a pretty good view of the city skyline. You can see the whole thing. Um, and if you think to look to your left and underneath the bridge and through the infrastructure, you can see the river. Um, and part of what maybe reimagining this would 
as a gateway would do is maybe try to draw some attention to the fact that there is a river there. We know it's there. Maybe not everybody knows it's there. Um, and then again, we're just looking under the bridge here. Um, Nancy, I, I believe yeah. you have a poll here. Yeah, yeah. So um, we're going to have a little bit of discussion. But first, I want to just get a little bit of information from all of you through a poll. Uh, so. One second. Okay, so the first poll is how do you use this gateway when you are through going through here? Are you walking? Are you biking? Are you driving through? Do you go there as a destination in itself? Or or maybe you've never been. Um, go ahead and answer that now. Okay. Well, it's like most of you have answered. So I'm going to share the. Uh, we had a comment in the chat here that it's also the the boat launch, and yes. you can see um, here that many of you drive through here. A few of you go there as a destination itself, and and some take advantage of the bike and walking path there. Um, I see there's an other, maybe that is about the boat launch, but um, feel free um, to type in the chat if you have other uses that we didn't list here. Um, and then also I'm interested in um, the frequency of how often you use this. So hang on one second and we will go to that. Um, so now you should see on your screen a question about how often do you come to or through this gateway? Right. And looks like um, many of you are coming through frequently and some rarely, but most of you, and some more frequently, but most of you have been there. Uh, so thank you very much for that information. Now um, I'm interested in learning more about your perception of this location. So for example, you know, what adjectives would you use to describe it? Um, what could you envision this, this being? Um, is there anything about this that is special to you? Um, anything you really dislike about this particular intersection or area? Um, go ahead and type in the chat. Uh, any of your thoughts there, or if you have a comment, feel free to use the raise hand button. Um, we, I, we have a comment that uh, it's functional, but fairly grim and industrial, uh, lighted. Are some of the words we're hearing. Uh, functional meeting place for group bike rides. That's Interesting. Are there, is there any uh, thing you can think about how this might be used in the future in terms of uh, 10 or 15 years from now? What would you like to see in this place? Um, Rebecca notes that roadway surfaces make it challenging to navigate roadways and pull-offs by bicycle. And um, also, Philip says it's unattractive, utilitarian. Um, park and bike to walk over Livingston Ave Bridge to Rensselaer. Um, here's a, a, a thing. We also have this question about what about this location should be considered or represented in the gateway concept? We're, as uh, you'll see in a little bit, we're, we're looking at how we can you know, spruce this up and um, uh, we have a comment here that the historical origin of the Erie Canal is tied to this, um, but it is industrial, and that there's the kayak launch there. Uh, can be very busy during boating and regatta season. Uh, 
someone suggests a, a two to 3,000 person music venue would be great or an also still an active voting site and that it needs it needs signage, especially historic, you know, historic signage about about the significance, I suppose, of the area. Um, important as the eastern end of the statewide Erie Canalway Trail and could be a much more welcoming venue for a live at five concerts. Um, also paving of the exit and Water Street is really needed. Uh, Ed says that he believes lock one is buried within sight of this location. That's interesting. Uh, yeah, and someone else uh, seconds that, uh, exhuming it would be amazing. Um, and having food vendors here, um, don't do anything that precludes future use as the northern terminus of the canal. That's all, um, that's all really, really super interesting. Um, we're going to be coming back to um, some more ideas about, about the northern gateway. Um, I want to just uh, go now to the southern gateway and take a look at that one. So I'll turn it back over to Chris. All right. Thanks, Nancy. And, and thanks, everybody, for your input. That's all really great to hear. And, and we appreciate appreciate that insight. It gives us, you know, just things like the Erie Canal as we're designing it, we, we can take that into my, in mind and, and use that. Um, so um, that's why we're here tonight. Um, but then taking us further south down to that southern gateway. So this feels a little bit different. This is more, um, this is the more down, well, kind of move through the through the downtown uh setting and you're kind of just getting south of that but it's 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 more of the the streetscape feel here um this photo one here um you can see in the background there's a nice island in the center of the intersection uh that island has some potential you can actually see that island uh from several blocks north if you're looking down this direction so that has some potential to maybe uh feature some sort of an installation um, or, or a focal point to kind of draw people down here and let them know um, that there's waterfront access. Um, as I mentioned before, you've got the, the overpass. Um, on this side, we've got the Hudson Riverfront sign coming the other direction. I think it says Historic Albany. Um, <clears throat> but going under the underpass, this is another place where um, there could be potential um, gateway type improvements with lighting or artwork and things like that. And Barbara will go into, into some, some ideas there or initial thoughts. Um, just got some more uh, in, uh, views under here. You got a, a mural of the, the half moon. Uh, had, I think that's Henry Hudson's um, uh, ship. Um, there's a, a little medallions with the various uh, different types of historic vessels as well. Um, and we're photo four here is on the Quay Street side. So we're right adjacent to the river. Um, and this is just looking south there toward the Dunn Memorial Bridge. Um, so there's, you know, we see slopes here under the bridge. These are like no man's land. Things don't like to grow in the shade and in the salt here, but there could be uh, potential for improving that so it looks uh, much more inviting. Um, we've got the bike the bike trail here um, in the nice obvious green that continues up under the bridge um, and also pedestrian bridge access um, up to the up to the Dunn. Um, so this is kind of the southern gateway area in, in what we consider the extent. So it's that intersection with the island underneath the overpass and then uh, uh, where we duck out and at, at the light at, at Quay Street. Um, so Nancy, I guess um, I'll turn it back over to you for your polls again at this site. Yeah, great. Thank you. And I just want to note, we've gotten a couple more comments in the chat, especially about um, Lock One and the Waterway Initiative um, with some links. That'll be really helpful, I'm sure, to the folks working on this project. And um, someone commented about public art at the Northern Gateway. And We'll be, uh, you'll be seeing more about that in just a, a few minutes, but right now I'm going to launch this poll about this Southern Gateway. Same question as before. How do you use this? Walk there, bike there, drive through, et cetera. Uh, 
All right, anyone else? All right. Heard from most of you. So you can see uh, sharing the results here that most of you drive through here, although some bike and some walk. Uh, it looks like this isn't much of a destination in itself. Uh, so thank you for that. And then I would like to know more about how frequently you come to or go through this Southern Gateway. All right. And again, uh, not daily, but, you know, once in a while, some more than others. So um, great, thank you, that's very helpful. And um, five days a week, says somebody. So that's pretty frequently. Um, same questions uh, for this gateway in terms of like, what's your perception of this, of this area? If with the other one, we said functional, but not very attractive, industrial, that kind of thing. What about this one? Uh, so Rebecca says she'd love to see it use more frequently um, as someone who bikes from Madison Ave up to the boat ramp. And um, the Dunn bike ped ramp is currently closed and detoured and it's unclear for how long. Um, so it says, uh, this is where I turn around. Um, also, absolutely uninviting is a, a description of this place. Feels dis disconnected from downtown destinations. Um, uh, for biking, I skip it and, and use Broadway instead because this is an unfriendly approach by bike. Uh, and uh, car dominated, it's just basically unknown area. Uh, neighboring blocks appear abandoned, uh, especially the approach to the water is uh, particularly, I think, um, an unfriendly approach for, for bikes. Uh, heavily trafficked by cars and trucks near the old Albany Dayliners ticket office. Um, lighting is most needed here. Uh, it's extremely dark at night. And Joe, uh, we're going to come back to that in a second, too. I'd love to hear more about that. And um, effectively disconnected from the Southeast Connector and the Riverside bike path. Uh, how about a bike way length, a long way, and also under 787? And uh, Ed says, has potential, but needs lots of help. And <clears throat> that is, in fact, why we are here uh, tonight. So uh, uh, slip lane southbound on Broadway makes it bike ped unfriendly. And uh, yeah, some agreement around has potential but needs lots of help. So um, are, is there anything about this location? I can see that there's already, uh, as Chris said, like some medallions and a uh, picture of the ship. Uh, there's already some sort of aspects of history. There's obviously a big concrete sign there that says Hudson Riverfront. But what else about this location, nearby landmarks, history, do you think should be considered in, um, rethinking the gateway concept here. Any thoughts on that? Do you like the, the mural, the medallions? Are you open to something else? Um, let's see, uh, we have, it would be good to hear from the local youth about the kinds of public spaces they would like to see. Mm -hmm. um, New Mass Transit Center plans at bus station area may provide lots of potential. Uh, Chris says Fort Orange is nearby. Mm -hmm. uh, the old harbor that was next to the Gothic SUNY building. Um, uh, Rebecca says, I don't know much about what was historically along the river on this stretch, but reference to that would be great. And, um, Besides playgrounds, not many public spaces that feel geared towards youth for meeting up and being safe. Uh, we'll, we're gonna get back to uh, some similar, th some things that tie into that as well. Also the oldest building in Albany is nearby. And I guess uh, as maybe the mural is intent, 
intended to indicate Henry, Henry Hudson stepped ashore here. That's cool. So that's great. That's definitely good food for thought that I'm uh, sure will be really useful information. So um, who is the intended audience for the gateway? Um, and better indication that you can get up to the waterfront preserve through this gateway. Um, Chris or Polomi, can you say a little bit more about who this is for? <laughs> Sure, I can speak to that. This is for anyone who's coming into the city and who lives within the city and takes pride in people who are also visiting them. And for people who use this on a regular basis and want a better experience of the space. So I don't think there is um, intended target audience of visitors or residents. It's almost for anyone who wants to experience the space a little bit better, but definitely catered mostly to you know, the residents and people who are frequent users of the space. So I hope that answers your question. Great, thank you. That's great. And also there's another comment here about like wayfinding for, for people on foot or by bike is, is really important here. So that is, I'm sure, definitely something that the designers will want to take into account. Um, I want to um, move us forward to some of the coolest part of tonight's program, which is looking at some inspiration. Um, and so I'm gonna ask Barbara from Stantec to share some of that. Thank you, Nancy, and hi, everyone. I'm gl so glad that you guys are here and providing all this feedback. So we have, um, I have, four, we have four slides with um, some uh, images from beautiful things around Albany and other cities. And I wanted to, <clears throat> get feedback from you uh, about what stands out, what is missing, maybe what, you know, what, what resonates with you. So I'm going to go over these four slides talking about some big idea concepts, what we would potentially could be implemented at these gateways. And then uh, specifically, we'll talk about each gateway uh, separately to sort of get some, some ideas that, that we can work with. Uh, so, um, on the first first of the four slides, I have uh, some images of um, art, uh, paint, and markings, some colorful expressions of of uh, of the area, and wanted for you to start thinking about what could represent you, what could represent Albany, and what could we, uh, how could we express our community in these uh, in these markings. Um, and this could be murals, you know, on the on the um, piers of the highway. This could be markings on the ground. We could be, uh, you know, we could be pretty creative with it. And some of these images you probably will recognize from around Albany, like I said. Uh, on the next slide, uh, another sort of concept and approach we can take is about lighting. And some of the lighting can be just purely functional for lighting up places that maybe are lacking and feel unsafe. Some of the lighting can be very artistic and some of the lighting could be both. Um, so we can think about many different ways how this can be approached. Um, and again, you might recognize the Skyway or <clears throat> some more just typical, you know, lighting uh, just uh, under, uh, under, in underpasses. Um, and this can be, um, you know, this could incorporate some project, uh, you know, projections and interesting artistic expressions as well. Um, so it really uh, depends how we want to approach it, and uh, you know, but we want to we want to <clears throat> think about making it special. Uh, on the next slide, uh, uh, some of the concepts. Maybe we really want to go big, you know, and we really want to make this place postcard worthy. And some of the cities around the United States or around the world have, you know, uh, their little sign uh, that you know everyone recognizes. And we have our nipper, and so maybe there's opportunity to to make something that is uniquely. Albany and really put it on a display and be sort of a recognizable uh, thing that everyone embraces and, and wants to take a photo with, uh, you know, <laughs> when the family visits or something like that. So, so that's also an opportunity to think uh, about something like that. Uh, if something comes to your mind that you think that would be like uh, a fun thing that that would really be a destination in itself. Um, I would love to hear from you. Uh, these are just some of the examples that you can see other places. 
Uh, and then the fourth uh, sort of concept or idea that I wanted you to think about, uh, if you can flip uh, Chris the uh, slide, it's kind of like more, um, let's say, uh, gentle touches of, uh, of just cleaning up the place and just landscape improvements that help, let's say, with the slopes under the highway that, you know, become a little bit no man's land. Some of the weeds will grow, but really nothing else. And so we want them just clean them up, make them look good and keep it low maintenance, but still make it interesting. And there are ways of, of making it special and making it, um, I don't know, artistic and playful in some ways. Uh, and so that's more uh, uh, using a hardscape to, to express again, uh, some interesting, uh, uh, interesting aesthetics and uh, in the community and maybe add color as well. Um, so I would, I would love for you to think about, you know, at each of the gateways, if there are opportunities to, for example, instead of just drawing a regular crosswalk, maybe we want to, uh, you know, draw a kayaker, you know, that crosses the road that reminds you that you really need near the water. Um, so those are just some, some ideas um, that we could implement. So with that, I think I wanted to switch to, uh, you know, and I guess these are like the four, four ideas that we thought about that are relatively feasible and implementable in short term, more or less, you know, we can figure something out within the budget that will make an impact, right? Like obviously there's unlimited amount of ideas and, and things that we could potentially do, but these were the four things that we sort of pre-selected. So I wanted to know if, you know, if there's anything missing or, you know, any preferences, um, you know, where are we leaning? And I don't know if, Nancy, do we want to kind of pause here for questions? Yeah, or do we want to specifically yeah. talk about each gateway? Yeah, let's let's pause here. I see we're already getting um, awesome. some, some comments that are specific to the North and the South. So that's great. Um, also just in general, I'm I'm curious about of these these four sort of treatments that Barbara presented, what stands out to you? What What seems like really exciting and promising to you? Um, and our, or as she said, these were pre-selected as ideas, but if there's anything missing that you'd really like to see, we'd like to hear about that too. We did have, um, a comment already that, um, at the North gateway painted murals with recognition of the activities that take place there, like boating, bicycling, running, fishing, uh, alive at five picnics and more. So some, uh, ideas of paint and so forth there. And then um, Rebecca also says the lighting at Skyway has been phenomenal and it would be cool to see that echoed at the South Gateway. I think that ties in with what we heard about the, the lighting really not being great right now at the Southern Gateway. Um, also, there's an awesome troll sculpture under a major bridge overpass in Seattle. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that and that's another... no but i get i have to research that i have yeah. <laughs> another so type I of idea see what that, is. Uh, that could be for the south gateway um philip says the thing that sets albany apart is the dutch heritage and its history from the 17th to the 19th century like the erie canal and that the art should emphasize that definitely heard a lot about that uh as we were talking to you guys about the gateway before we even showed these and then um, Alex suggests definitely needs to have both paint and lighting. Different colors pop with different color lighting projected on it. It doesn't necessarily need to be interactive, but it uh, certainly needs both paint and lighting. And um, then I see a couple of comments of uh, nipper and tulips uh, that people could take pictures by. Um, the pillars under 787 really could use some fun paint. Um, also the half moon as possible sculpture and mural subjects along with nipper and, and some tulips um, need both security and colorful lighting at both. Uh, let's see, Joe uh, says that lights and landscaping should be the top priority given the budget. Local art programs can handle the murals. Um, also a suggestion that we, this could reflect that we're in the state capital. And um, Peter is asking, should we assume that 787 will be in place for the next 10 to 20 years? And Polumi, uh, do you wanna just answer that for purposes of this planning? 
for the i mean we obviously don't have perfect answers on that because uh, i'm not directly involved but just the feasibility study for for uh 787 um is a three-year process through 2026 so it's probably a safe bet to think not anything you're probably not going to see a significant change with that i would think for at least on the order of 10 years maybe it'll be magically sooner than that but 10 years is probably a, a conservative <laughs> um uh, uh foresight for that um, or longer um, those projects take a lot of time mm -hmm. so we have an opportunity here to to make things much nicer for you know the better part of a decade or more so mm -hmm. what do you all think about um you know, thinking about the seasons in upstate New York, you know, what kinds of treatments do you think will work across the board given our Albany weather? Um, you know, what, what stands out to you in that way? What about um, other sort of iconic images that could be uh, reflected? Any other thoughts on that? Um, <laughs> Ed says he can say he's met many people that have traveled hundreds of miles on the Empire State Trail and then arrive in Albany and are tremendously underwhelmed. So this is our chance. And there are a number right. of eagles along our section of the river now. The local birds might be great to include too. It's helpful. So history, nature, state capital. Uh, any work on the gateways needs to accommodate the EST and build on its momentum. As EST as Empire State Trail, is that what it's referred to, I'm assuming? I think mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I agree that <clears throat> color needs to be added. And um, here's a uh, comment that I could see a welcoming sculpture at the North Gateway. Uh, in line with Ed's comments. So is that the one, um, Chris, where you mentioned a sculpture or that was also the Southern one? That's the Southern gateway, but th there are areas where we could potentially do a, a, a sculptural piece at the Northern gateway as well, so. Um. Um, yeah, somebody's commenting that I think there's probably some, comments that are not going to um, everyone that are probably going to the host and panelists. So if you, as you're commenting, if you can just click the drop down and select everyone, everyone will be able to see it. But I am trying to read all the comments. So hopefully everyone can get a sense of what's being said. Um, also, uh, it's, there's a suggestion that the art could incorporate something to acknowledge native culture and the history of the river. And um, a welcoming sculpture would give a sense of arriving at Albany for people on the Empire State Trail at the Northern Gateway. Uh, Ed says he'd put a sculpture in both locations. Uh, people arrive on the trail from both North, uh, West, and South. And uh, a mural would also potentially be a way to convey a sense of arrival. Uh, let's... Let's take a look at some of the um, community programming ideas since we touched on that a little bit earlier and, and then we can come back to an overall discussion. So we're coming back to Barbara for that. Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I was actually reading Peter's comment in the chat, so <laughs> got, got thinking about the South End Connector for a second. Um, yeah, so thinking more about the future and, you know, uh, who, who knows what's going to happen in 10 and 20 years. And, and some of you already commented on, you know, oh, maybe there will be concerts there or some other gathering spaces. So um, I would like you to think more about, you know, about that you know, what the future could be, you know, what, what some sort of new acti activities could happen. And I know that in the South End Connector planning, uh, there has been some ideas of, of activities under the 787. I wanted you to think about what could happen. And I think this is more um, towards the Northern Gateway, just because there's more space there in those parking lots. Uh, you know, again, 
what what would you want to see there in the future and again we have lots of inspiration images here including you know skate uh, you know skate parks and flea markets and art exhibits and light exhibits so just wanted to hear about that um, if you wanted to allow your imagination to work yeah and we heard earlier about how there's a need for more safe spaces for youth to to gather and do fun right. things. Um, and yeah, going back to Peter's comment, um, he was saying that it, if possible, start to consider the value of a vibrant South End connector as a sort of a third gateway to the waterfront. And um, note, Ed says note that Albany really is the center of the Empire State Trail uh, from Albany as it goes north to Canada, west to Buffalo and south to New York City. So Albany should take some pride in that as sort of like a crossroads there. Um, yeah, well, and then there's also the ride on the, <clears throat> that goes along the Erie Canal ride that goes, you know, the, the whole length of the canal all the way down to Albany, it terminates in Albany every summer. So that's definitely like lots and lots of bicyclists descend on Albany. Yeah. Yeah. And then also um, acknowledging Albany's various waves of immigration, there's, you know, lots of uh, from indigenous people to French, Dutch, German, Irish, African, Hispanic, Middle East, et cetera. So really celebrating the diversity uh, that makes up Albany. And, um, Rebecca says there's currently, a, there's a regatta at the Northern Gateway in September and there could be more waterfront festivals in that location that would include vendors and food. Um, same with some of the running races. But some of what limits that is that there isn't it really a, an existing permanent stage, um, but there could also be outdoor movies hosted there. Um, Dylan suggests exploring ways to dampen sound at the northern site. So uh, the highway be making it incredibly loud. It basically, it's very difficult to have a normal conversation. Um, and uh, yes, the finish line of the cycle, the Erie Canal is located at the northern location. Um, Ed's asking about the, uh, what happened to the amphitheater that was supposed to be built on the river side of the Skyway. And uh, Jen suggests there could be rotating temporary installations depending on the season. Uh, so thank you for those comments. Those are really, really good. Having seen this programming slide, is it change anybody's uh, thoughts at all about some of the different treatments that we saw before. Um, let's see, just uh, the amphithe amphitheater is on the river side of the Skyway. Um, a skate park would not be out of place. Uh, the river was once a hotbed of boat racing of all sorts. The rowing kayaking communities should get involved. Um, bear in mind that there is no neighborhood around the Northern Gateway pedestrian accessible recreation is unlikely to be heavily utilized. And uh, somebody noted earlier on about um, the central warehouse being there as well. So that's a factor. Anyone else have any thoughts? I really appreciate this really uh, lively chat that everyone's participating in. Um, do you have any additional questions, uh, Chris or Barbara, that come to mind that you'd like some uh, some input on? Um, I just a uh, couple things to note. One with with the Northern Gateway and those parking lots. Um, you know, just I just <laughs> want to make sure I put it out there that the City of Albany doesn't own those. Those are owned by the state. That does not mean that there can't be a, an, a, a usage agreement um, uh, put in place in the future, but just as far as commitments we can make <laughs> to what we can do there, that's that's out of our purview. Um, you know, we need to loop the state in there, but the, these are certainly areas that that could be looked at for for these types of uses. So that's that's not precluded. Um, so I just want to make sure I, I put that out there. 
Um, also, just in general, a general uh, comment for things like the sculptures. I, I know someone had mentioned the Mass Transit Center down near the south, um, where the bus bus station, Greyhound station, is down near the south gateway. There's also development going on up near the northern gateway. So there are potential. Um, there's the potential for some maybe changes at those locations. Um, you know, unrelated to this project, but directly adjacent to it or whatever, tying into it. So um, some of the things we're doing here, uh, you know, we want to be conscious of that. You know, if we have a sculpture and maybe the roadway alignment changes or they, they change something, you know, a sculptural piece can be moved. Um, we don't want to do things that that would, you know, we don't want to build something right now and then two years from now, dig it up and, and destroy it. Um, uh, so at the very least, you'd want to be able to move it and reuse it. So um so we are aware that that there these these may be changing um in the in the near term as well and and, and we're we're conscious of that um we got a comment that um incorporating green infrastructure and resiliency measures into any landscaping should be a priority especially close to the river also that there is a walkway from the end of water street that leads to the parking facility by the discovery center uh, a big part of the challenge is that Erie Boulevard is very pedestrian unfriendly and uh, just to note that uh, the Northern Gateway is, is closest access to the warehouse district and restaurants and bars and that yeah in fact wintertime activities would take some real imagination and mobility considerations. So those are good comments. Thank you for those. Um, feel free to continue to type in the chat. I'm gonna just suggest that we go on to the um, uh, next steps. And also maybe in, in talking about the next steps, uh, Peter asks, can the North Gateway ideas and plans percolate into the Livingston Ave Bridge program? I don't know if you have an answer for that, Chris. Well, I think partially the thing is that of the chain, a uh, great change difference there, right? Because the Livingston Avenue Bridge is higher up with the train tracks. so. It's not exactly like you, you have to go under the bridge and around and up onto the Skyway where you would connect to the bridge. So uh, I think it's not necessarily, you know, connected in that sense. Yeah, and so th there may not be a direct connection or a direct potential for a conflict there, but it's certainly something that, that uh, you know, as a gateway, um, acknowledging, um, you know, that that's a, a near future uh, uh, a connection that's being built um, is something we can we can keep in mind. And there are also uh, there's a bid grant out doing uh, signage um, in this, especially down near the southern gateway. So um, you know that's a separate project progressing, and we're also uh, you know coordinating with that. So we're we're not going to be conflicting with any of that, and and, and uh, you know we're not necessarily. Uh, reinventing the wheel there but we want to make sure anything we're doing is is coordinated uh, with those uh, with that project and and other associated projects um, and i think yeah. like yeah like we said at the start of the uh, of this call i think we're looking at immediate implementation ideas and then a longer term vision so that we will make sure that it's all integrated with the other plans and feasibility studies that are happening but the focus is definitely in making sure that we can make immediate improvements to it with the limited budget we have. So I think it's really great to get all of these ideas uh, in terms of how you do want to use the space because we will definitely look towards that as we build the longer term vision and plans for the space. Uh, Chris, uh, do we have a uh, slide about next steps and con uh, contact and so mm -hmm. forth? Yeah, so um, here you can see um, there's an email there, dpd at albanyny.gov, if you'd like to send in any further comments. Also, you can see here on the Albany uh, City website, there is a page devoted to this, Hudson River Waterfront Gateways. Um, so uh, just a couple more comments have come in. Um, cyclists on the trail, the North Gateway will indeed be the gateway to Albany because the Livingston Ave Bridge will be the river crossing. And all of these things are taking place uh, in the Albany waterfront ecosystem and they must all be 
taken into account in planning. Yes, yeah, certainly in that um, delicate area. Um, do you want to say a little bit, Chris, about the next step of concept design? Right. So um, we've now we've gotten your feedback. Um, we may get additional feedback uh, through through that email um, from people watching the recording over the next few days. But our team will take a look at all the all, all of the input you've given, responses to the polls, the comments you've made. Um, use that to inform uh, some concept design. Obviously, with the concept design, um, uh, you know, we'll be conscious of the budget as well. Um, and as we develop the concepts, um, we plan to uh, do that over the next couple of months. And then in the early summer, June, July, um, uh, have a second public meeting where we can kind of show you what's being developed, um, a little bit more defined plans for um, what we wanted or what we're, what we're thinking about designing here. And then uh, give one last um, opportunity for input on that before we uh, progress the final design for this 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 first uh, this first project um, here. Great, thanks. Um, really appreciate everyone um, coming tonight and be participating in the discussion. And we've gotten lots of great feedback tonight. I look forward to seeing you if you if you registered, which you did, I guess, register for this meeting. You'll get a uh, information about future meetings uh, from us. And um, we are making sure that all of the comments that were in the chat are captured and will be um, taken into consideration by the design team. So, um, and let's see. Uh, a lot of people agreeing with Ed regarding, I think this has to do with um, having directions for people arriving on the on the trail um, so that people are directed to places where they can get connected to what they're looking for. Um, and uh, people seem very interested in, in having more discussions about how to make that happen. Um, so with that, um, Polymi, I'll ask you to just close us out. Well, this has been a wonderful interactive discussion. So I really want to thank everyone that's come out this evening and spent time to you know, give ideas and feedbacks. And we hope we can really put it all together and present to you a plan that you, know, you would be proud to take forward in terms of the implementation in the gateways. So thank you so much for coming out this evening. And we'll definitely be in touch. Please do visit the project website to stay abreast and feel free to write to us with any questions, concerns, comments. So I guess till June, July at the next meeting, we hope to see you all there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Everyone have a great night. Thanks everybody.